In this age of anxiety, we could all use someone to hold our hand and show us how to get by. Don't worry, little buddy. Just keep breathing. We can do it if we put our minds to it. You're worth saving. Yogacharya J. Oliver Black was a person we can all learn from. He was a self-made millionaire, and he was also well-known in yoga circles for being one of the most advanced direct disciples of Paramansa Yogananda, the godfather of yoga in the West, and the author of the spiritual classic, Autobiography of a Yogi. And among all of the thousands of students and disciples Yogananda had around the world, he mentioned that Mr. Black was his second most advanced disciple after his spiritual successor, James Lin. Eventually, Yogananda would give him the title of Yogacharya, which basically <laughs> means yoga teacher. Yogacharya followed an age-old Indian yogi practice of taking people into the forest away from worldly distractions so that he could impart them with life-changing wisdom. As per Yogananda's directive, Yogacharya founded Song of the Morning Ranch, a non-profit yoga retreat located on 800 acres of woodlands near Vanderbilt, Michigan. It's a place of natural beauty, peaceful vibes, group meditations, yoga classes, retreats, and profound spiritual refreshment and relaxation. It's a place to get away from the cement mixer of the city life for the exclusive purpose of being recharged by the infinite. If you went to the ranch and you were feeling lonely or downhearted, a solitary walk on the grounds might feature some wildlife that would look you in the eyes as if to remind you that you're not alone. And truly, we are never alone. Thankfully, there are always more evolved beings that will accept us the way we are and help us however we let them. Yogacharya J. Oliver Black is one such being. He lived his life to teach others how to live their lives more successfully, showing all the opportunities they could take next for the sake of their spiritual development. And he can still help us today. Here's five bits of wisdom applied from his teachings. Here's a tip that can wake you up in the morning and give you a healthy boost to start your day. Salt water is a natural, inexpensive cleanser, and Yogacharya called it the single most important thing you can do for your health. Theoretically, it can help with hydration, aid digestion, stimulate sluggish bowels, and flush out the buildup of toxins that may be contributing to aches, pains, and health challenges. To do this, start with two tall glasses of water. Next, add salt. I'm gonna use a pinch or two, but Yogacharya used to use two level teaspoons every day for 60 years, and he lived until he did the Dipsy Doodle at the age of 96. Next, stir the mixture up like a tornado, and then drink it first thing in the morning before breakfast. You might find it wakes you up and energizes you even more than your morning cup of coffee. A word of caution, shortly after the salt water flush, make sure you have access to a bathroom, there's something else you're gonna need to flush. Make sure it's medically okay for you to add extra salt to your life, it's up to you to make an informed decision, and if not, no problem, here's some cute chipmunk faces to brighten your day. Scrape those bananas. This is a funny bit of health advice. Yogacharya taught that the banana was one of the most perfect foods, but he advised to scrape the bananas. The theory goes that the outside of the banana and the inside of the banana peel has a mild toxin that's intended to repel harmful insects. So for the most health benefit, it's recommended to scrape it off before eating. Or you can be like this raccoon and just eat the whole thing. If someone ever offers you a banana, it's fun to ask them if they scraped it first. And if they say no, you can be like, what are you trying to kill me? Now maybe you've decided you're still here, you're still alive, you never scraped your bananas before and nobody's gonna make you do it now. You're gonna risk it. That's fine. Some people like to live dangerously. You're still a good person and out of respect, this chipmunk face is for you. Your breath holds your body and spirit together. You can escape into eternal freedom if you slow your breath. This is one of the more advanced teachings of Yogacharya. As the visionaries and mystics would say, if you slow your breath and put your mind and consciousness on a location, you can go there just as if you went with your physical body. Don't think you're just muscles, bones, and skin. The body is like a light bulb. Our true selves are like the electricity. It is a changeless awareness that illuminates the body bulb. And our conscious awareness can exist in many different realities. We exist in the wakeful state, the deep meditative state, the unborn state, the afterlife, and we exist in the dream state reality. Our mistake is that we strongly identify with whatever state of reality we're in and think this is all there is. So what leaves our body at the time of death? Yogacharya says it has to be something without physical shape or form. You could call it a body of light. And here's the cool part. He says you can learn to travel with it. Great spiritual adventures await when we calm the mind, slow the breath and meditate. Come on. You can ask any question you want and the answer is within you. Yogacharya says you can merge individual consciousness into universal consciousness. 
To do this, be still and peaceful. And if you can train yourself to relax sufficiently, you can contact the cosmic mind. It knows everything from the beginning of time and before that too. Deeply concentrate with your focus on the right ear and the infinite consciousness can give you the answer you're looking for. You'll see it in a vision or hear a voice within, just like the mystics and prophets have. It's an experience of ask and you shall receive. So let's practice being still and meditating so we can hear the wisdom of the indwelling presence. It's our guide, our helper, and our advisor. Do you know about the unlimited powers inside us that are waiting to be realized? Yogacharya says divine power is the power behind our power. It's the power that brought the universe into being. It's the power which keeps the planets in orbit. And it's the power that governs the cycles of birth, growth, and transformation in all things. We can choose to declare our oneness with that power. Yogacharya says that so long as we work to please God, all cosmic forces will assist us. When God is working with us, all of our abilities increase in power. Divine will can change the course of destiny, wake the dead, cast mountains into the sea, and create new solar systems. Because we can't see across all space and time, we can't truly know what's best for us right now. So our self-will tends to be guided by limited understanding, whereas divine will is that which is best for us from a place of total truth and love. Divine will is what we'd probably want for ourselves if we had a greater understanding. So instead of praying, I want this and I want that, we can have faith God knows best, and we can decide to ask God to use us for divine will, no matter what it is, and no matter where it takes us. We can ask for clarity and guidance on what to do next, and we can ask for the strength and courage to carry it out. Yogananda says, you'll see that you get much better things when God chooses for you. So instead of making life choices based on what we want to happen, we can take a step back and ask ourselves, what is trying to happen? And if we keep moving forward and there's a stubborn obstacle in our way, we can throw it back to God and say, I'm doing what I can, but if you want things to happen different, you're going to have to do something here. And let's be patient with ourselves. Allegiance to divine will can be a challenging commitment, even for those on the spiritual path. Yogacharya says we should keep aligning ourselves with divine will until it becomes a normal way of life, just like parting our hair to the other side of the head. We should be grateful for whatever the Creator gives us in life, knowing that it comes from a place of love. Let's not judge the moment, because the struggles in life are necessary for us to gain the developmental strength we need to self-realize. And let's try not to complain about anything, because when we do, we belong to the world instead and we can learn to keep a healthy detachment to this world. It can be so overrated. As Yogananda says, this is the insane asylum of the universe. This reality is not the ultimate reality. This is not the place for us to lay down our dreams of perfection, because everything here falls apart, turns to dust, or goes away like a passing dream. But while we're here, we can access greater courage and determination by reminding ourselves of a greater reality than this one, just as Jesus did when he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Yogacharya says that we can become fearless if we keep our consciousness on God. No matter what is happening in life, no matter how bad it is, we can ask ourselves, is there a creator? Is the creator loving? Is the creator intelligent? Then won't the creator take care of its creation? We just have to accept that everything doesn't have to go the way we think it should. The ways of God are mysterious, but that adds to the excitement. If it were obvious and predictable, it wouldn't say much for the skill of the divine producer in this cosmic play. We are all on a journey from ignorance to understanding in all things. How will you best prepare for the road ahead? As we deepen our understanding, we may decide that allegiance to divine will is a better way of traveling. We develop our greatest powers to live greatly and love greatly when we align with the divine. Yogacharya's legacy continues through books, videos, audio, people he's inspired, and through Song of the Morning Ranch, which is still in operation today. Yogananda says, environment is stronger than willpower. Sometimes we need help getting unstuck and putting ourselves in the right environment can help us make that breakthrough. Yogacharya says that if you stay at Song of the Morning Ranch for seven days, you'll never be the same.